All right, let's get started. Oh, it's Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, and it's my birthday. Oh, well, happy birthday. Well, you'll get an absence, but but I do have a present on Thursday, so. <laughs> All right, okay, so let's get started. Let me uh, let me review uh, uh, just a few quick announcements. So I've got so long and short of this uh, announcement is that everything on Blackboard is should be up to date in regards to your grades. The attendance grades are up to date. Homework 5 is up to date. Um, I'm not really going to go over the solution to Homework 5 in, in significant detail. The only uh, significant point that I think is worth mentioning is that a few of you got the factor of safety kind of backwards. Instead of dividing, you multiplied or vice versa. But I think that was the second problem. The answer should have been, uh, I think it was 60,000 or 600,000. And some of you multiplied, so it ended up coming to be like 864. But, but I'll, I'll let you all uh, review that on the solution, and we can ask that during the exam review. <coughs> so let's talk a little bit about that. So grades and everything's up to date. Let's talk about the exam. So I want everybody to have a good idea of what's going to happen on the exam. OK, so I've got this posted. Um, everybody should have access to this. Uh, I'm going to talk for a few minutes and then leave you all a chance to ask whatever questions you would like. Uh, Homeworks, labs, what have you. Now, come on. I, I plugged it up. Hold on. No, I didn't. Would help if you, yeah, that would help if you actually plugged it in. Okay. All right. So the exam is going to be closed book and closed notes. But if, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, give let you all use a calculator and a formula sheet like last time. You can put whatever you want on the formula sheet, again, except for worked out examples. Now, one thing you do not need to worry about is reproducing the mixed design procedures, the whole 10-page thing. I'm going to provide that for you uh, on the exam. So you're going to have the exam, and then you're going to have that. Okay? So, uh, and I'll have scratch paper and a stapler. But for the problem where you need the full-out mixed design procedures, I'm going to have you do the problem on that. So actually work on that. So you shouldn't, I'll be honest, you really shouldn't need too much in the way of scratch paper on this exam because you can just do the assignment on the, uh, uh, on the, the mixed design procedures. Okay? Now, uh, in terms of the format of the exam, the format of this exam is a little different than what I usually do. So let me explain. So problem number one is going to be a lot like problem number one on the last exam. It's going to be a set of short answer questions. And when I, again, when I say short answer, I mean short answer. If you're using more than, you know, like two sentences or whatnot to answer these questions, you're doing something wrong. These are really, these are short answer questions. Um, problem two is going to be a set of short computation problems, kind of akin to what you did on homework five, and maybe some snippets of stuff that you did in homework four, but, but short problems, stuff that shouldn't take uh, too long to compute. Problem three is going to be a condensed mix design. If I condensed some details I am giving you uh, in order to make the process go a little faster. Again, I'm not a time crunch guy. I did this exam start to finish in about 20 minutes. So you should have no issues in terms of time. Now, coverage is going to be homeworks four and five, labs five through nine. So that's from mortar all the way up to uh, when we did our last mix design. Uh, and then lecture notes three to four, and that includes 4A, 4B, 4C, uh, everything that's posted online. The topics. So we, there's really two main areas of coverage on the exam. So the first one is Portland cement and admixtures. So make sure that you just understand Portland cement, understand its basic properties. Make sure you can describe voids that show up in, uh, in cementitious mixtures, both desirable voids and undesirable voids. Make sure you can describe the properties of, of cement that is hydrated. So what does it mean for uh, uh, cement to set? What does it mean for it to harden? Uh, compressive strength, soundness, all of that stuff. Um, make sure you can identify the different types of Portland cement according to ASTM. Uh, make sure you can identify common admixtures and what their purposes are. So what's an air trainer? What's a water reducer? What's a retarder? What's an accelerant? Uh, so on and so forth. 
Uh, so just make sure that you have a, a good understanding uh, uh, of that stuff. Um, now, come on. Are you kidding me? Uh, okay. um, for Portland cement concrete, that's obviously the big ticket item on the exam. Uh, make sure that you can describe fundamental properties of Portland cement concrete. Make sure that you can proportion batches using simplified approaches, so arbitrary volume method, proportion method, stuff like that. And make sure you can proportion using the refined method or the volumetric method. Remember, the refined method and volumetric, that's basically saying the same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Make sure you can describe the steps uh, associated with successful concrete applications. So by that, I mean batching and mixing, I mean transporting, sampling and testing, uh, so on and so forth. Make sure you can compute relevant properties of hardened concrete. So what is the modulus of elasticity of uh, hardened concrete? What's the modulus of rupture uh, of hardened concrete? Now that's both using experimental data and uh, uh, the assumptions that ACI provides. So you want to make sure you can do both. Um, make sure you can demonstrate uh, an understanding of some various destructive and non-destructive testing techniques and make sure you have an understanding of, of different types of concrete. What's, a, what's shotcrete? What's fiber reinforced concrete? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that is the exam. This is bugging me because it's weird. Okay. Um, with that, I'm going to shut up and turn the floor over to you. So any questions? Housekeeping question. Okay. Let me let me can I can I can I see this? Let me see. Okay, so your climate issue is going to be whether or not it's exposed to freeze-thaw conditions. Right. So if it's in Miami, it's not. If yeah. it's in Montana, it would be. So if it is, so let's say it's in Miami, then you really wouldn't be ex uh, uh, restricted to this maximum water cement ratio because you're not going to be exposed to freeze-thaw. But if it's in Montana, then yeah, you do need to consider that. Does, it, does that make sense? Yeah, but then right here, it says like, those are sulfate exposures, not temperature exposures. Yeah, that's a good question. So, so that, that, that relates to uh, its exposure to sulfates. So. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they will be. Uh, will the equations be given? I mean, I'm giving you the sheet, the, 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 the packet. The only thing that's different, I'll go ahead and tell you, the only thing that's different from the uh, formula sheet that you're going to be given on the exam to the one that you were given on the packet, uh, if you look, I think it's like on page 9 or page 10. Yeah, pa the very last page. All right, there's a, see where it says like W correction in that last cell? I removed that so you can actually write there. That's literally the only difference. I'm, I'm serious, that's the only difference. This is your time, please. That's the, yeah, that's the one where you needed a nominal maximum aggregate size. Let me pull up the solution. So, which, by the way, you all have the solutions to all this stuff, right? Everything's online. So, Come on. Come on. All right. Oh my goodness. 
So the only thing that was missing on that problem was you needed an, oh, go away. The only thing that you needed on that problem was uh, the nominal maximum aggregate size. Once you had the nominal maximum aggregate size, based on the fineness of the, uh, the fine aggregate, based on the fineness modulus, you would determine how much coarse aggregate would need to go into the mix. So that's basically all you had to do for that problem. The, uh, uh, the question on you know, what does the, the water cement ratio do to the amount of coarse aggregate, well, it does nothing because how much coarse aggregate you put into the mix is a function of the fineness modulus of your fine aggregate. The water cement ratio doesn't play into that particular step. So that was, that was basically it. Now I will admit I wish that the problem had said nominal max aggregate size of one inch right at the, uh, at the onset. I understand that the book was trying to get you to make an engineering assumption. For the purposes of an exam, I wouldn't do that because I want the exam to be formulated such that everybody arrives at the same answer. I'm not going to require you to make spurious open-ended assumptions on the exam. Okay? I'm, I mean, there, I, let me be clear, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I'm going to negate the critical thinking aspect of engineering altogether. All right? I, you all are, are engineers and not technicians, but I want the exam to have a solution not 50 solutions. So. Does that answer your question, though? The last problem? Yeah. 33-35. Yep. The water cement ratio, yes. And you got 0.55 or, okay, all right. And where, if you have to do 3,335 root, will you have to have linear interpolation where it is? Yeah. Yeah. So is linear interpolation required on the exam is what you're asking? Yes. What? That's it right here. Right. Hold on. Are you talking about this? Like, okay, so um, this is Aaron trained. So at 4,000, your water cement ratio is 0.48. At 3,000, it's 0.59. So the FCR was what, 33 something. Okay, so somewhere between here and here, probably closer to the 3,000 than the 4,000. So 0.55 makes sense. So and that's just linear interpolation. So. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. Now. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, where's the thing? What the? You see that, right? It was grayed out. <laughs> Not in here. In structural analysis, I'll buy that. So, okay. So, hold on. I'm going to actually copy the uh, equation. Straight from Google. Because Google never lies. Okay, so, I mean, this is the basics of linear interpolation right here, so, oh my goodness, there's a mess. Oh, goodness. Okay, all right, help, help me out. Um, do you have the table in front of you? Okay, so let's look at the two points on the table. So one of them, so x0 and y0. So first off, y is your goal, 
Okay, so our goal is to determine the water cement ratios. So the water cement ratios are going to be my y values, the x values are going to be the compressive strengths. So there's a compressive strength value of 3,000 and that corresponds to a water cement ratio of what? 0 0.59. And then x1 is 4,000 and then y1 is Then basically for an x value of 30 something, 30, right? So y equals, so 0 0.59 plus uh, 33.35 minus 3,000 times 0 0.48 minus 0 0.59. So this fraction is going to come out as negative, which makes sense because the water cement ratio is going down from 3,000 to 4,000. So we're going to get a negative answer in this big fraction. This is going to be 4,000 minus 3,000. And if you do that, you should get 0.55 or something like, something close to that. So here, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say it is about 0.55. Worthy, no, no problem. Worthy addition to the formula sheet. But honestly, let me say this. You're going to be doing that, you know, in here, in concrete design, in hydraulics, you're going to be doing stuff like that throughout engineering period. So it's one of those skills being able to linearly interpolate. I would just make sure that you know how to do, period, because you'll even use it in engineering economics when you do like time value and stuff like that. Hey, you got an FE uh, coming up. That's all I'm saying. So. All right. Any other questions? This is your time. Y'all seem beat. I could do a lot of things. You have to have faith. Yes. So, hold on, hold on. Which, uh, that source is, that's, a, that, that's wrong. It, it, that isn't supposed to be, that was a typo. When I, I, just fundamental properties of hardened concrete. Sorry about that. That ca I'll be honest, that came from the exam one review slide when I said sources of aggregate, and I was in a hurry. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Maybe. All I'm saying, you, you need to be able to, to do both. I'm not going to tell you which one you're going to get on the exam, but you, you do need to be able to do both. Now, in fairness, you also need, no, let, let's be clear, okay, whether or not you're using 57,000 squared of FC prime or 33 times the weight raised to the 1.5, et cetera, those are theoretical approximations, okay? That, in other words, if all I did was just say, you got, here's some properties of this concrete, I just told you some numbers, can you predict what is the modulus of elasticity? That's what those are for, they are predicting. There is another way of determining the modulus of elasticity of concrete, and what's that? Go down the lab and test it, right? So I could go test it, get the stress-strain curve, linear, right, linear region, 
slope stress over strain to get the Young's modulus. So that's another way of doing it. Okay. Does that make sense? Same thing with a modulus of rupture. Okay. How do we predict a modulus of rupture? No. That's how we would compute it from testing. And what is it? You should know it. You just used it on the last, or no, you didn't use it on the last homework. That's right. You used the test equation. You're looking at it. 7.5 lambda squared of FC prime. That is if all I did, so, so let's explain what that means. Okay, 7.5 lambda squared of FC prime. Okay, that is a prediction for the modulus of rupture of concrete. Let's take those cylinders that we tested in the lab. You all have the data from the cylinder tests in order to determine the compressive strength. But we didn't do a beam test yet. What if we never did a beam test? How would we determine the modulus of rupture? Well, we couldn't determine it from experimental data, but we can predict it using the compressive strength. Okay, so there are two ways to determine that. One is to use that prediction. The other is to do what he said, the R equals PL, you know, so on and so forth. That's actually taking a beam, going down to the lab, breaking it, recording that force, and then back calculating what is the stress at which that beam failed. That is the modulus of rupture. So there's two ways of going about that. So you also need to understand the difference, okay? Now, I mean, if I give you some testing data, are you going to use 7.5 lambda squared of SC prime, or are you going to compute it using testing data, or vice versa? You need to be aware of that. Yes? So, Robert brought up like normal weight earth beneath the concrete. If we're dealing with sand like earth concrete, would it say that or would it say that you have more hard sand than you should have? No, the con if, you, if you are dealing with sand lightweight concrete or lightweight concrete, it's going to be classified or it's going to be spelled out. Again, there, I'm, I'm going to make you cr think critically, but I'm not going to make you spuriously make assumptions because you could assume something and you could assume something and based on your assumptions you could both both be right now I have to grade two different exams in case you notice I'm a little busy so 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 yeah yeah Is there, uh, it, it's just the use of different aggregates or different proportions of aggregates. Um, they do, and I, and I don't want to start going down that road, um, but you are right. It's, it's basically a standard. It's just different proportions of materials and using different materials that are, in fact, lighter weight. I, I know that that sounds like, well, duh, of course, but... That's basically it. <laughs> Let me also say this. More often than not, that's usually not the biggest engineer to a, or biggest concern to a general engineering project. Remember, the only instances where you've got to start shaving weight is if you've got a really massive or complex structure. I mean, like, you need to start shaving weight on the Golden Gate Bridge and stuff like that. So, so yeah because it's heavy. Well, it is. That bridge doesn't even notice the vehicles on it. It's just got to hold up itself. Guarantee you its strength four load combo is, governs it, which for you folks who haven't had bridge engineering, that's the load combination related to just its dead load. You have higher safety factors on the dead loads. Uh, I guarantee you that governs the design. Or at least that's my prediction. What do you mean? Well, see. The the, the lane load 
according to ASHTO, is essentially equivalent to about 64 pounds per square foot. Was the bridge packed? Okay, so I can sh I'm going to show you all images next semester so that you all see what 50 pounds per square foot looks like. But for those of you that have already had concrete design, you're shaking your head because you probably remember those images. What you're talking about is probably like 100, 150, something like that. So you're talking about double the, the lane loads. That's double the amount of load you'd get from traffic. That's a lot. And plus, another thing, ASHTO assumes that lane loads only occur in 12-foot lanes. But if I had to guess the bridge being packed, hell with the paint on the road, the <laughs> people were everywhere. So. So in that instance, maybe strength four doesn't govern. I don't know. <laughs> but then again, you know, if you're going to do that, some ought to have checked. You know. Why would anybody do that? <laughs> you said you were interested in law school after this. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that a lot of people don't check. <laughs> so then they need your services. <laughs> You know in law school they have a lot of ethics classes, right? <laughs> like, what do you think the bar exam is? <laughs> so, just saying. I'm not going to encourage people to go make Let's talk about concrete. <laughs> Let's go back to concrete. Yes, sir? No, I'm not going to make you go, you know, ha have all of that for, for the exam. Anything that you would need from that regard, you'll have. I mean, um, to qualify that, the, the statistical prediction that we use for required compressive strengths, that comes from ASTM. And I'm not going to make you have the standard, it's just, it's just there. As long as you understand the standards and are able to, to negotiate them and, 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 uh, and, and understand their meaning, that's really all I'm after from this class. When you all produce your report, uh, the big report for, for concrete testing, one of the things, I, I hope you have started to, to put that together, I hope. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But one of the things you're going to have to do, there's a section in the report for each of the experiments where you discuss the differences between what we did in the lab and what you do in ASTM. I'll throw out one for you. What do we do with the concrete that we uh, use with the air content? Like, what do we do with that concrete in the lab? We put it back. Should we have done that? No. But for our purposes in just casting some cylinders and doing some testing, for our purposes in an educational environment, it's not that big of a deal. But in the real world, and according to ASTM standards, we violated the standards. So you need to comment on that, and so on and so forth. So those standards that are online, you might actually want to look at them. Because if I had to bet, there's probably a couple others we might have violated, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Shucks, he's making us read. This is an engineering class. We're just supposed to do math. The big report. Nope. But but I'll say this: if you have followed the um, if you have followed the the formatting guidelines, then you're good. Like that sample template. As long as you're filling that stuff in, you're good. I mean, let's be honest: this this report's going to be long. I mean, uh, with with pictures and whatnot. I mean, you're looking at you know. 50, 60 pages, if not more. So. You've got time. What's that? <laughs> not that big.
But but honestly, let, let me say something. If you think about stuff like this in terms of uh, like, well, I'm writing it so the report is as short as it needs to be, then and, and like I don't want to write a 20, 30 page report, well then you're not thinking about it right. What you need to do is break the report down as it's outlined into its appropriate sections and then take each one of those sections one at a time and write enough to describe it. Provide enough tables to describe, enough figures to describe that. You do that, you will get your page, you know, you'll get to 40, 50, 60 pages easy. I mean, there's tables of contents, there's appendices, there's your data sheets, so don't let the report size freak you out. What you need to be doing, though, is recognizing that while you've got a lot of time, you don't have a lot of time. So, so <laughs> you like that? But the point is, if you wait till the last minute, you will be miserable. If you pace yourself, you will be good. We've already done all this, the fresh mix tests. They're done. And the, literally, the only thing we're waiting on between now and the end of the semester is just data, just numbers. You could set up all your Excel graphs. You could set up all your computations and comparisons. You could be doing that right now. Everybody could be working together to set up your Word templates, you know, writing sections of the report. Nothing stopping you from doing that now. It better happen. That's all I'm saying. Okay. He said that, not me. <laughs> but yeah, you all want to get together and start working on that. I mean, you could be, honestly, there's no reason why you couldn't start knocking out the majority of the report, like, theoretically right now. I mean, literally, the only thing you're waiting on is numbers. You're just waiting on the final data. Setting up your Excel graphs and templates and all that, there's no reason you can't start working on that now. I know that guy who assigned that is just such a damn jerk. I, Same day as the test. It's vir it's yeah, it's not even real work, it's virtual work, right? <laughs> it's pretty good. I thought it was hilarious. They thought it was hilarious. I know these three thought it was awesome. He thought it was pretty good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're just like, we already had it. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yes, sir. That is a function of your internal group dynamic. <laughs> What? Ice tea. I think they're thinking about, you know, like a case of five hour energies or. <laughs> so, going off of what she said, don't do that. There's no reason with. Dropbox or Google Drives or the cloud or any of that, there's no reason that you all at a distance can't be independently working on sections of the report to put together a cohesive document. You all, honestly, uh, here's another thing. This is a perfect dry run for next year, okay? Because what's going to happen next year? Senior design. And if you think this report's bad, this report's a cakewalk compared to that one. I, honestly, I mean, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying that senior design, you spend a whole class putting together one report. So it's, it's pretty hefty. So. It's, it's all one big experience. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm out. No. <laughs> this report should be done with the method of sections. That sounds like something not Michelson would tweet. <laughs> Well, I know things. <laughs> like, I don't know things about stuff. <laughs> Kurt's like, I can't believe he knows about that. <laughs> My wife follows that account, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. She, she, she just looks at it and goes, My goodness. <laughs> Um, well, she just found out about it, so um, that hadn't happened yet. I, I will. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, back to concrete, back to the exam. How, how are we feeling? Do you have a question? Oh, and your phone's... Are y'all feeling good about the exam, feeling bad, thinking it's going to be the greatest experience ever, nightmare? It's Halloween, so maybe it's appropriate we talk about. All right, we got a lot. What were you? Hold on, there's a lot of people. Did you have a question? Or? I can mix it up a little bit. I, I'm going to um, burn your exam. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. This is the way I grade so that you all are aware. This is the, this is the way that, that I grade, and this is the only way I know how. I have a big Excel template set up that is the solution. If there's a value that's wrong, I change it. And I keep doing that until I get the same answer you did. Then I can go back and see what you actually did wrong, and I keep a log of what I took off for it, and I try and be consistent. Now, let me, let me say something. There are times when, you know, I, I get a, 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 now this isn't a structural analysis, but I'll get a moment diagram, and I'm just minus eight, you know, because I, I just see it, and it. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I can do. So, but I really try and do that. I'm a human being, and, I, and I'll, I'll be the first person to admit that I could make a mistake counting up numbers or something like that. But in terms of my grading process, I, I, I stick by that pretty, pretty strongly because I don't really see any value in, you know, you messed up the FCR, so the whole thing's wrong. Like, as long as you know what you're doing, if all it was was an uh, arithmetic error at the beginning, I'm not going to punish your, it's not like you didn't understand what you were doing. You got it, you made an error, I'm going to dock you for the error and I'm going to move on, so. I, I, I always operate that way. Folks that have had me for more classes than they'd like to count know I, know I operate in that fashion. Am I right? You all are like, we're already getting tired of him. <laughs> hmm. Um, let me think about that. I, I, the, re, the thing is, this room is only available for a certain time slot. And my initial thought behind that is no. We are testing, we're, we'll do our exam, and we'll, you know, we'll come back at 2 o'clock and test. And again, the only reason I say that is because I don't think the room is reserved. Um, another thing, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Um, probably going to put the tension testing lab off again, so we're just going to do cylinder testing. There's a calibration issue with the Tinius Olsen that we're currently working to, to sort of diagnose. Um, we could test the, the steel specimens, you know, at any time, and it wouldn't impact our, our uh, educational experience. So I want to see if I can get this resolved. If not, we'll just test them and, and, and move on. But the, uh, it, it, some of the, the the calibration's a little wonky. I'll have to explain it when we start talking about the concept. But we, we actually noticed the problem about a week and a half ago, and 
we think we've got it diagnosed and uh, we think we've got it figured out, but I want to do a test run to, to make sure that the, the data sounds right. Because I'll show you, I, I don't want to start talking about steel because it's not on the exam, but when we get to that point in class, I'll explain it. I think you'll kind of see what's going on. It's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting problem, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Any other questions? We got time. That depends on whether or not I'm going to answer. You can ask whatever you want. The exercise of the knowledge should be refreshing enough. You're talking about like com fuel and combustion. This isn't thermo. <laughs> You're missing out. <laughs> Talking about that class is getting you fired up, right? Any questions at all? You just ready to get back to virtual work? Is that what it is? All right, we're going to do it. Hold on. You good? You're holding everybody up. You good? Okay. Come on, hit me with the calculator. Everybody good back here? Good over here? Good back here? Thursday, one more thing. Class starts when? <laughs> class starts when? 12.25. Say it again. When's class start? 12.25. There we go. <laughs> Get here early. Get here early. That's all I got. See you on Thursday.